Welcome back to Sports Center. Second game of our ESPN doubleheader today. Nuggets Suns, wherein Denver will have two-time MVP Nikola Jokic. Jokic fresh off 53 points in game four, most ever in a regulation playoff loss, was assessed a technical foul for this courtside nudge of Suns owner Matt Ishbia. Jokic was fined 25 grand US for the incident, but not suspended. And with that, we welcome in Ryan Brokoff for a little brekkie with Brokoff. So, Ryan, there's a lot to chew on there with Jokic. As a former player, what was your take when you saw what happened? It was a bit of a messy situation, wasn't it? Um, look, I think Jokic's thought was, you know, Denver kind of lost control a little bit of their game. They saw a Phoenix player down. Let's go grab the ball. Let's go take it five on four and try and get an e easy bucket to try and turn the momentum around. And, yeah, it, it just it turned into more than what it should have. Um, the Suns owner, you know, shouldn't have held on to the ball like he did. Jokic probably shouldn't have uh, tried to rip it out of his hands. And, and it just, you know, a little bit of uh, that, uh, that push was unnecessary. But I think, you know, cool heads prevailed. Nothing serious came from it. A, a fine's probably adequate punishment for Jokic. Yeah, it was just kind of that perfect storm situation. We understand that frustration from Jokic and the Nuggets. I mean, they were up 2 nothing in this series. Somehow the Suns have managed to even things up at 2. So, Ryan, how have they been able to do it? I look no further than uh, Booker and uh, Durant. I think, you know, from watching some of the game and some of the film, it's pretty simple that they've made changes offensively. They've, uh, they've tried to isolate Booker and Durant up high, causing... The Nuggets to uh, overhelp or send double teams on one. And, and as you see, Booker drives middle, draws a help from Durant. Who leaves Durant open? But that's just the pressure that the Phoenix Suns put on you. And then when those guys are, are taken away, both, both the double team, but leaving guys like Shamit, who had a terrific fourth quarter the other night, makes some really big shots. Um, so their offense is just spreading, spreading people out, uh, getting those guys downhill. And they've done an amazing job of scoring, you know, both averaging over 30 points a game. Booker averaging, uh, shooting those at a 60-plus percent field goal clip, which is unheard of. They've been hyper-efficient and, and offensively been really tough. Hyper-efficient when they were so much under pressure. Ryan, of course, Jock Landell, another reason for the Suns tying things up. He was named this week to the Boomers World Cup team along with the rest of the squad. So, Ryan, you played in the World Cup in 2014. How does this year's version stack up? It is an exciting squad. That's, that's how I see it. There's so much youth and talent coming through as well as the mainstays, the, the guys that have been there and done it for Olympic Games, World Championships. You know, you got uh, Josh Green, uh, Josh Giddy, who's been so vocal about wanting to be a part of the Boomers program and, and play for the national team. So those guys, uh, Dyson Daniels, who's a young up-and-coming NBA player as well, it, it's, those are the guys I see for the future that are going to take over this program. And you've got Mills, who has been so good. He raises his game to another level with the national team and has, has carried the Boomers through countless programs. Joe Ingles um, is still there. Matthew Delvedova, the, the heart and soul. So it's, it's a great mix of youth and, and, and experience, and I look forward to watching them. Yeah, youth and experience and living such an important time as well. Ryan, we want to take advantage of the fact that you're with us on SportsCenter Australia to ask you, what was it like for you when you found out you were going to the World Cup? Oh, it's one of the most proud moments of, of my basketball journey in my life. Um, you know, playing for your country, uh, it means so much to us here in Australia. It was a childhood dream of mine to, to represent Australia at World Championships and Olympic Games. And to finally get the, the jersey presented to me was, was a moment I'll, I'll never forget and, and very proud of. Yeah, absolutely. Sure, the similar feeling with that list that we just saw from those guys. Of course, Australia will be facing Finland, Germany, and Japan in that challenging group. Ryan, thank you so much. Thank you.